Hello everyone, this is Junaid here from Edureka and I welcome you all to this session in which I'm going to talk about future of cybersecurity. So without any further delay, let's take a look at today's agenda. We we'll start this session by understanding why we need cybersecurity and what does it do. Then we shall discuss type of cyber attacks followed by the brief history of cybersecurity. Moving ahead, I'll be speaking about modern day cybersecurity system and what the future of cybersecurity would look like. Before we begin, do consider subscribing to our channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on training technologies. And also, if you're looking for online training certification in cybersecurity, check out the link given in the description box below. Alright, so let us now start off by understanding why and what is cybersecurity. We live in a digital era that understands that our private information is more vulnerable than ever before. What I'm trying to say here is we all live in a world that is networked together from internet banking to government infrastructure where data is stored on computers and other devices. Portion of this data can be a sensitive information for which an any unauthorized access could have a negative consequences. So why do we need cybersecurity? I'm sure by now you guys have a wild guess why we need cybersecurity. Well, with loads of online activities, cyber attacks are on the rise and the cyber attack is now an international concern. Organizations transmit sensitive data across the network to other devices while doing their business activities. And cybersecurity ensures protecting that information and the system that is being used to process or store it. So, what is cybersecurity, right? Well, cybersecurity is a set of principles and practices designed to protect our computer resources and online information against threats. What I'm trying to say here is due to our heavy dependency on computer systems in modern industry, that store and transmit an abundant amount of confidential and essential information, cybersecurity has become a critical part of every organization's digital function. So now that we know why and what is cybersecurity, let's now see the different types of cyber attacks. As I've mentioned earlier, we live in an era where we are totally dependent on computers and internet for our day to day activities. What basically happens in cyber attack is the exploitation of computer systems and network. And we can broadly classify these types of attacks into two categories that is web based attacks and system based attacks. Starting off with web based attacks. These are the attacks that occur on a website or application. Some of the important web based attacks are like injection attack. In injection attack, some data will be injected into web application to manipulate the backend security and fetch the required information. The example for this is SQL injection, code injection, log injection and XML injection and many more. Then we have something called as session hijacking. It's an attack on user session over a protected network. You see web applications create cookies to store the state and users session. For stealing the cookies, an attacker can have access to all the user data. Then we have phishing. Phishing is a type of attack which attempts to steal sensitive information like user login credentials, credit card numbers and anything else. It occurs when an attacker is masquerading as a trustworthy entity in an electronic community network. Moving ahead to brute force, it is a type of attack which uses trial and error method. This attack generates large number of guesses and validates them to obtain actual data like user ID, passwords and anything else. This attack may be used by criminals to crack encrypted data or by security analysts to test an organization's network security. The next category of attack is system based attacks. So what are system based attacks, right? These are the attacks that are intended to compromise a computer or a computer network. Some of the important system based attacks are like viruses. Okay, virus is a type of malicious software program that spreads throughout the computer files without the knowledge of a user. Wondering how it works? Well, it's a self replicating malicious computer program by making copies of itself into other computer program when it's executed. Then we have worms. It is a type of malware whose primary function is to replicate itself to spread throughout the computer. In general, it works the same as a computer virus, but worms often generate from email attachment that appear to be trusted senders. Moving ahead to Trojan horse. It is a malicious program that causes unexpected changes to computer setting or unusual activity even when the computer should be idle. So what happens here is it appears to be a normal application but when opened or executed, some malicious code will run in the background without the consent of the user. Finally, we have backdoors. Backdoor is a method that bypasses normal authentication process. 
a developer may create a backdoor so that an application or operating system can be accessed for troubleshooting or other purposes. So moving ahead in this session, let's now look back and see how the field of cybersecurity evolved over the years. It was in 1972 with a research project on ARPNET gave birth to the cybersecurity, where a researcher, Bob Thomas, created a computer program called a Creeper that would move across the ARPNET's network, leaving a breadcrumb tail wherever it went. It read, I am a creeper, catch me if you can. Then Ray Thompson, who is also known as the inventor of an email, wrote a program called a Reaper, which was able to chase and delete creeper. You see, Reaper was not only the very first program of antivirus software, but it was the first self-replicating program, making it a first ever computer worm. Challenging the vulnerabilities of this emerging technology became more and more important as more organizations were starting to use telephone to create remote networks. Each piece of the connected hardware presented a new entry point and needed to be protected. As reliance on computers increased and networking grew, it became clear to the government that security has essential and unauthorized access to data and systems could be catastrophic. In 1972 to 1974, witnessed a market increase in discussing around computer security, mainly by academic papers. Creating an early security was undertaken by ESD and ARPNET, with the US Air Force and other organizations that work cooperatively to develop and design security kernel for Honeywell computer systems. UCLA and Stanford Research Institute worked on a similar project. In 1980s, we all know we moved from ARPNET to the internet. The 1980s brought the increase in high profile attacks, including those at National CSS, AT&T and Los Alamos National Laboratory. And also a point that I would like to mention is that it was around the same time when the term Trojan horse and computer virus were first used. At the time of Cold War, a threat of cyber espionage evolved. In 1985, the US Department of Defense published a trusted computer system evaluation criteria, aka the Orange Book. This provided a guidance on assessing the degree of trust that can be placed in a software that possesses certification or census information what security measure manufacturer needed to be built into the commercial product. Then moving on to 1987, the birth of cybersecurity. 1987 was the birth year of commercial antivirus. The first antivirus product was for the Atari ST, which saw the release of Ultimate Virus Killer. In 1990s, world goes online. 1990s was quite a year. The first polymorphic virus was created. British computer magazine PC Today released an edition with the free disk that accidentally contained a disk killer virus, infecting tens of thousands of computers. EICR, that is nothing but European Institute of Computer Antivirus Research, was established around this time. Then comes 2000s, the threats diversify and multiply. With the internet available in more homes and offices across the globe, Cyber criminals had moved more devices and software vulnerabilities to exploit than ever before. And as more and more data were being kept digitally, there was more to plunder. In 2001, a new infection technique appeared. Users no longer needed to download files. Visiting an infected website was enough to get hacked. Instead, messaging services also began to get attacked and worm designed to propagate via IRC, that is nothing but internet chat relay channels also arrived. Alright, so let us now move ahead and see modern day cyber attacks or in short cyber threats. The first step to deal with new array of these threats is to know your enemy. That is to know the different types of cyber attacks and malware. Understanding how they work and how we can protect ourselves and our business and our clients. Let's review some of the most common attacks that have thrived last year and expected to grow in the future. The first one is ransomware. Example for this is WannaCry. Ransomware is a type of malware that prevents or limits users from accessing their system either by locking the system screen or by locking the user's file until a ransom is paid. Modern ransomware families are collectively categorized as crypto ransom. They encrypt certain files into an infected system and force users to pay the ransom online to get the decryption key. Ransomware can be downloaded when unsuspecting user visit malicious or compromised website. Ransomware can also arrive as a payload either dropped or downloaded by other malware. Some ransomware are known to be delivered as attachment with spammed email download from malicious pages or dropped by experts into a vulnerable system. 
The rise of Bitcoin contributes greatly to the increase in popularity of ransomware among hackers. Then we have Viper. The example for this is no pity. This type of malware might walk like a ransomware and quack like a ransomware but is a wiper. The intention of this malware is to wipe out all your data. In contrast to the ransomware that is based on the financial motive of a cybercrime, the wiper is focused on causing damage and chaos among its victim. It can be caused by government-led group or terror organization as a part of cyber warfare or by ruthless competitors who are willing to go all means including paying hackers to attack their rivals. The next most common type of cyber threat is spyware. Example for this is Keylogger. Spyware is a malware that is designed to collect information and monitor the activity of computer that they are installed on. Spyware can collect any information that can benefit the attacker such as password, credit card details, documents, commercial secrets, browsing history and many more. It can be programmed to perform complicated actions like recording keystrokes or take screenshots whenever you use a certain program. Some spyware can even activate computer's microphone and camera to record everything that is happening in the area around the computer. Spyware can be used to analyze user preference to customize online advertising for those users or even for a harmful cause such as identifying theft, credit card theft, fraud, blackmail and industrial espionage. Usually this kind of malware is developed by professional hackers who then sell the secrets in the black market for the use of online fraud and other illegal activities. Then we have adware and the best example for this is one click downloader. The term adware is frequently used to describe a form of malware that pushes advertisements and banner on your screen. Most users don't want to see ads but adware can be downloaded without the user being aware of it. It usually happens when you download free software or add-ons. Some adware programs have functions built in such as analyzing the sites you visit to customize ads. In this case, adware does more than showing advertisements. It collects information about you and you aren't even known about it. Although some adwords don't have malicious intent, the execution can be quite intensive at times. For example, when adware observes your activities without your consent and sends the information to the software's authority, Generally, there are types of adware that are usually classified as spyware and threat accordingly. However, some adware also operates legally. Moving on to the next one that is nothing but botnets and DDoS. An example for this is ping of death. Web robot or simply bot isn't necessarily a bad thing. It's a software application that can perform tasks over the internet. From web callers to search engines to chatbots to other services. The problem starts when a computer serves or other internet device are focused on malware to become the bot network. Once the device is infected, it can be collected remotely by a hacker to conduct other attacks. Other type of botnet attack is distributed denial of service, also known as DDoS. When the infected device generates malicious traffic to make machine or network resource unavailable. In many cases, users are unaware of botnet infection in their system. So moving ahead, let us now see the future of cybersecurity. The rate at which cybercrime is raising is alarming. Almost every week, a new high-profile cybercrime is being reported. Every business, no matter what stage of its digital transformation it is, it should keep cybersecurity as its topmost priority. Let's see now what the future holds, right? The cybersecurity professionals are in high demand. The need of skilled cybersecurity professional dares as every passing day New attacks are being coined that are more powerful than the previous ones. These rising threats require skilled cybersecurity professionals to help ensure safety for the individuals as well as for the organization. We can also expect robust integration of AI in cybersecurity tools and techniques. This is because it can improve expert analyze, study and understand cybercrime. It can also enhance cybersecurity techniques that company uses to combat cybercriminals and help keep their organizations and customers safe. The automation of many roles and tools can also be heavily implemented. This will allow performing a constant search for threats and deploy immediate countermeasures. All right guys, with this we come to the end of our session. I hope you enjoyed and learned something new. If you have any further queries, please do mention them in the comment box below. Until next time, goodbye and take care. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest.
do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!